and welcome to this edition of All About Hopkinton, the original HCAM series created to bring you the people and organizations that help make our community the great place that it is. I'm Mary Arnott. There are a lot of groups out there and a lot of people dedicating their time, energy, and talents to improve some aspect of life in Hopkinton. I am privileged to be sitting here talking with them and sharing their stories with you. Joining me today is Abby Hennigan, a recent Hopkinton High School graduate and a singer-songwriter. Welcome, Abby. I'm so glad to have you on the show today. Thanks so much for having me. It's really great to be here. Yes. Oh, I've heard so much about your talent and everything. And before we talk about your music and your singing and your songwriting, uh, how about we start out and you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Um, well, I've been living in Hockington pretty much my whole life. I moved here when I was like two months old. And um, I've just graduated from Hockington High School. and. Um, yeah. <laughs> you, I understand, are going to the Berkeley School of Music in Boston. Yep. You start that in the fall? Yeah, I actually leave next Sunday, so oh. the 28th. <laughs> All right. Well, the show will air at different times, so the dates might be confusing oh, a little yeah. bit. But that's quite an accomplishment. Congratulations. I know it's not easy to get into that school. That's a wonderful opportunity. Thank you so much. You must be very proud. Thank you. Yeah. Would you like to tell us a little bit about your music, how you got into it? What made you decide to become a singer and songwriter? That's not an easy profession to get into. Um, well, I really, I always loved um, writing, like poetry and songs and stories. And um, I started playing guitar when I was like 12 or so. My, I got into it because of my uncle, who is a musician. Um, we would perform together at family parties and fundraisers, and I really gained confidence doing that. And um, then I learned to play ukulele, and I got involved with musical theater, and I started writing my own songs, and I started putting them on my YouTube channel, where um, I actually started getting views and subscribers, and. It was just, it was really like a hobby of mine. I never considered it as a career until actually just recently. I was like, I love this way too much to not pursue it. So, yeah. That's now, I you said you know guitar and ukulele. Did you take lessons? Did you teach yourself? How did? Um, I was mostly self-taught, yeah. Um, I got my guitar for Christmas, and I would think I was 12. And actually, a funny story about that was um, right after I got it, I went upstairs to my room and I looked up how to play Firework by Katy Perry. And I sat there and I taught myself and I learned it. And then I went downstairs and I put on a show for my family on Christmas. <laughs> and that's the first time I ever sang for them. And they always tell that story whenever I talk about it. Well, you must have a real knack then. It comes easy to you to be able yeah. to teach yourself <laughs> like that. I've tried to teach myself some piano things, and I, I tell you, I have to go for lessons. It's not going to work doing it on my own. Yeah. So you have a real knack for that. Thank you. Um, you mentioned, I think you said your uncle was in music a little bit, too, and there's a story about your name also that's related to music. You want to tell us about that? Yes. Yeah, so my dad is the biggest Beatles fan of all time. Um, so my middle name is Rose, so Abby Rose. And he always jokes that I was named after the Beatles album, Abbey Road. And he hasn't confirmed whether it's actually true or not. My mom always denied it. But it's always, I just love saying that. It's such a funny like tidbit about myself. Well, at least they didn't give you a middle name of Road. Yeah, <laughs> it's exactly. Rose. <laughs> that goes a little better, Abbey Rose, for a name. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about what you're doing today and maybe some of the venues that you've played at. I um, want to hear about your music. OK. Well. This has actually been a really great week for me. Like I've been doing a ton of stuff lately. Um, just last month, my first song was released on iTunes. Congratulations. Thank you. It's also on um, Spotify, Apple Music, and YouTube. It's called Let Life Be. And um, I recorded it at a studio, uh, Shorefire Studios in Lowell. And um, just last week, it was played on the radio. It was uh, 92.5 The River, and it was, it was the most surreal moment of my life. I was going to say, it must amazing. have been thrilling to hear yourself actually be on radio. Like, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. my dad and I, we went out to the car, and um, 
we turned it on and he recorded it. So I posted it on my Facebook page and my Instagram page of like my reaction and it's just like priceless. <laughs> I was just shocked. For yeah. your first song on the radio, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now, um, what venues have you played at? I know you've done a number of things around town and so why don't you tell us about some of those. Yeah, so I got started doing like um, open mic nights and some of the talent shows at the high school and I was a part of the Be Free Club and we had lots of coffee houses and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, more recently, like last weekend, I played at the Abby Benford Keep Smiling fundraiser, which was great. Yes, I was there. I remember you being there. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this past weekend, I played at Faneuil Hall and the Bolton Fair, which were both um, really, really fun too. Yeah. Now, do you have an agent or do you find out about these different venues on your own and then get booked or people contact you? How do you get involved with that? Um, no, I go to a studio or a voice studio in Westboro. Mm -hmm. It's called Patrice Paris Voice Studios. And um, through um, them, they get us a lots of gigs, and um, we go like on group outings of like a, like three or four of us will um, play a show at somewhere that needs um, entertainment. Um, so like some some things I I'm going about on my own, but a lot of things I'm going through my studio, which I'm really grateful to have been doing. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, when you uh, go to Berkeley, will you have time to do some gigs on your own, or are you pretty much going to be focused on your studies, or do they allow you to play at different venues? Do you know yet? Um, I think part of my schoolwork is performance and um, like doing uh, recitals and stuff like that, where like my final project will be to perform. Mm -hmm. But I'm really hoping to still be able to get out and do like open mics and stuff like that in my free time when I'm not studying. Now I don't know much about Berkeley other than its fabulous reputation and you know as a music school where to study and do, do you have to take other classes economics mathematics and all of that as well is it a four-year program or tell us a little bit about that. So um, it's a four-year program mm -hmm. I could double major and do five years if I wanted to which is something that's on my mind. Um, but most of my classes are music related. Like I can take electives mm -hmm. for like English or something like that, but most of them are all like music based. And it's a semester program, you know, two semesters a year or do you know? It's two it? semesters, it's yeah. Two semesters. So from like um, September to May. Are you going to be commuting or you think you'll live in the city? No, I'm going to be living there. Yeah, so right on Commonwealth Ave. Oh right in the middle of yeah, everything exactly that's exciting yeah so when um, how do you prepare all right you've got some place you're gonna go and sing like when you were singing at the keep smiling for Abby uh, event how do you prepare yourself and what how do you decide what music you want to do um, well preparation is like the number one thing if like if, when I don't feel prepared I feel so nervous like I can't do it or um, so like preparing is wicked important. I spend like hours putting together my set lists and practicing. I'll practice for like my dad or um, for my voice teacher. Um, and I take like, I figure out how much time I have and I estimate about like five minutes per song. So then I figure out how much, how many songs I could do in the set. And I try to do like a, a nice balance of like older songs and newer songs. So like the whole audience can enjoy it. Well, that's good. I mean, you're very thoughtful in your preparation, yeah. it sounds like. Um, and that, that helps you to come overcome the nerves. Um, I've always been a huge Barbara Streisand fan, mm -hmm. my age group, I guess, maybe or something. <laughs> and she had al always said she hated performing, even though she loved singing. She always got so nervous, she actually hated performing. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like you're getting over being nervous, that you prepare, you know yeah. your music, and you're getting comfortable or probably have been for a while being out in front of the audience. Actually, this is something I'm just recently overcoming. I used to have like a crazy fear of performing. I would be so nervous. I was like shaking beforehand. Like some nights I almost felt like I couldn't do it. And um, I think it really comes with experience and practice. The more and more I started performing, um, the more comfortable I felt on stage. And I think once I started singing my own music and my original songs, I felt really confident in myself when like 
the audience would give me a good response to something that I wrote that made me feel really, really comfortable. Mm -hmm. it, uh, I was, when you mentioned the Key Smiling for Abby event um, in earlier August here, and I was working at one of the tables as a volunteer, and I heard your music, and I turned and I saw, and I was you know, listening to you from afar, um, but I was feeling kind of funny because there you were doing these wonderful songs and music for everybody that was there, but because of the way, the nature of the event, people weren't really sitting around and listening mm -hmm. to you and watching, and I thought, oh, that must be difficult to do that. Did you feel funny at all? Or? Um, I mean, every, every uh, performance is different. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people are listening, and sometimes they're, they're more um, like involved in the fundraiser or whatever it is, but... Um, I'm just happy to be there, to be performing, to be singing for, I mean, and honestly, I think you would notice if there, it wasn't there. Yes. Because if it's not in the background, you know, so, and the one or two people that are listening or really paying attention, it's like, I'm singing for them, you know. Yeah. So I don't really mind it. I think I'm just happy to be there. Well, I was very glad you were there. Yeah. You did a wonderful <laughs> job. I'm just saying, oh, she's doing such a wonderful job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Do you have a uh, recent, uh, anything uh, coming up in the near future that you're going to be playing at before you go off to school because you're going pretty quickly here. Mm -hmm. So, um, so August 24th, I am singing at the Marshfield Fair from uh, three to five thirty, and then in October I'm singing at the Topsfield Fair. Okay, I'm not going to ask you how much, but are you at the point now where people are paying you to share that wonderful talent of yours? Uh, yes, good, because yeah. <laughs> they should be. Yes, <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. So you've got to get all packed up, and do you know what you're going to take to when you go to Berkeley? And, uh, uh, yeah, I just finished most of my... All your instruments, my, of course. My <laughs> dorm shopping yesterday. Um, but yeah, I, I got to pack everything up pretty soon. Now, is there are these campus apartments you're living in, or is it something you got on your own with... Yes, they're on campus. They're on campus. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. You, you're going to have roommates? Do you know who Yeah, I have two roommates. Have yep. you met them yet or anything? I've met them on like Facebook and um, we text and stuff. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I've actually been to a couple of the, they have the recitals you mentioned at Berkeley. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are free, by the way. The audience should check yeah. them out because sometimes they give free performances and they're wonderful. Um, you know, on d Sunday afternoons or something, as I recall, or different times. Yeah. But they're great. I, I did want to ask you if you have any advice or encouragement for other young people who maybe 12 or a little older or even a little younger who are now starting to really get into music and think about maybe someday they'd like to be a singer, songwriter, and performer. Yeah. Um, I think my greatest piece of advice would be to just get yourself out there and really practice and just keep working on it and um, perform as much as you can, whether it's in front of your family or at an open mic night or fundraisers. I think experience is really key to gaining confidence and putting yourself out there and surrounding yourself with people who have the same interests and um, are really supportive of you. And um, yeah, I think practice and performance is yeah. I can't key. remember exactly the name of the book. It might have been called 10,000 Hours, but it was something about you have to do something for 10,000 hours to perfect it. Mm -hmm. you know, to really say that you're in that profession or that you're an expert at what you're doing. So, um, like you mentioned, lots of practice. Do you find that sometimes you have to give your voice a rest, So, Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Those vocal cords, you don't want to overwork them too much. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know uh, I used to read about, <clears throat> excuse me, talking about losing your voice. I'm doing it right now. Um, Celine Dion, I think I watched an interview with her once where she talked about how Sometimes there were weeks and even months that she didn't talk to, to rest her vocal cords. Yeah. And I thought, I don't think I could go even a day without talking. I don't know how she did that. But it was so important to her to protect her singing mm -hmm. that that's what she did. She had to stop talking for a long, long time yeah. and let them recuperate. So I hope you never have to stop talking or singing for <laughs> months. I uh, hope so, too. Yeah, but do, are you taking voice lessons or anything right now? Yes, in um, Westboro, I take voice lessons with Patrice Perry. Oh, you mentioned yeah. that. Yeah, that, yeah, it's yeah, the same Westboro. Studio. Yeah. So that's the one that helps you. Um, do they also teach um, musical instruments there, too, or is it voice lessons? Um, right now, it's just uh, voice lessons. You're doing the voice lessons. Yep. Now, will you continue with those, or will you have voice classes at Berkeley? Um, it might be hard for me to 
come back to Westboro when mm -hmm. I'm in um, Boston. So I'm definitely going to keep in touch and stay involved with the studio. But I think I have lessons um, incorporated into my, my classes and stuff. Do you have your classes already set? Do you know what you're going to be taking for the semester? Um, no, not yet. So when I move in for orientation, I have to do um, auditions and take placement tests. Oh, and then I didn't know that. Okay. They'll give me my, my schedule. When you said you were going to be moving pretty soon, I thought maybe they had you all set up, but you've actually got to still wait and find out what classes you're going to be in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, I guess that's all right. <laughs> they'll figure it all out. They've done it for a number of years, yes. so it can't be. Now, what do your friends and family think about how your career is taking off and um, your music? My friends and family are everything to me. <laughs> They are so supportive, and they want nothing more than for me to follow this dream I have. I really am so grateful to have them in my life. Oh, yeah. That's wonderful. That. Tell us a little bit about the song that you said you just had released and played on the radio. I would ask you to sing a little bit of it, but I won't put you on the spot. But maybe you can just tell, what was the title again, and what's the theme? I mean, It's called Let Life Be. Okay. And um, I wrote it because... I wrote it about like labels that people tend to place on other people mm -hmm. um, and how it's been kind of hard to grow up like um, feeling like you have to be one thing or another be just because of maybe your gender or your race or something and how we tend to label people and that just limits who we can be and what we can do and it's kind of just like let life be to be who you are and I'll be who I am and we can all just coexist together. Now, are you playing guitar while you're singing your song? Yes. Okay, everybody's yeah. got to go out and hear that one then. So okay. Yeah. Or well, maybe some already have on the radio, I'm sure, but I have <laughs> to go out and listen to it. Uh, is that out on your website? Yeah, so it's on my website. Um, you can stream it on Spotify, you can buy it on iTunes, or you can listen to, I have a lyric video on my YouTube channel that you can listen to for free as well. Very nice. Yeah. Tell us what's out on your website. Um, on my website, you can really get to anything. I have um, several different videos of me performing at live places, um, some videos from my YouTube channel of songs that I've covered. I have um, dates for my upcoming gigs and pictures and um, yeah. All kinds of stuff like social that. Social media is wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the YouTube, media is great. the the website, yeah, getting that, getting your music out there. Yeah. Do you have any things from when you were 12 years old posted out there that people can watch, or none of the old stuff? Maybe just. I, you know, I do. Oh, you do. But it's privated. Oh. Like I, I should really, I should unprivate it because I think it's kind of cool to look at the progress. Because my first video I posted on YouTube was like. 2010 or 2011 mm -hmm. and it's so cool it's so weird looking at old me and how far I've come <laughs> well speaking of how far you've come let's talk a little bit about maybe where you're going where do you see yourself five years from now or where do you think you want to be five years from now hmm tough I, question I love the city mm -hmm. so I don't know if I'll stay in Boston I've always had this uh, dream to move to Los Angeles or my best friend has moved to Nashville yesterday. Um, so I see myself still involved in music. I don't know. I always wanted to be a songwriter. So I don't know if I see myself necessarily on the stage performing, but I see myself involved in the creation of music in some way. Yeah, boy, I, I admire that. I it's just, it's always, it's not only you got to come up with all the music and the words and everything, but how you keep things original because, you know, you, yeah. you hear songs and sometimes you think, oh, didn't I hear that in another song a little bit? Um, you know, I know there's a lot of ways to combine notes and make music, but sometimes it's very difficult to make it sound. Everything's so original. Yeah. Do you struggle with that at all? Um, sometimes I have this fear that it's like we're going to run out of songs to write, and sometimes I hear a song and I'm like, oh, like, I wish I wrote that. Like, that's exactly how I feel. But mm -hmm. when you really sit down and write out your thoughts, it's like they're so different than everyone else's. I mean, it might be the same message, but the way you write it or the way you portray it, is still so different and so original. I'm always wondering, you know, like with guitar, you have chords and things that maybe a combination of notes or something will somehow come out sounding like somebody else's when you didn't even know that. Yeah, it, I've know, done like, that before. <laughs> I've definitely done that before. Well, I've, I'm sure you, you know, you 
music will always be wonderful and original, the things that you write, and I can't wait to hear the song that you just had released. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else would you like to tell us or offer any advice about getting into music for young people? Um, how about the classes at Hopkinton High? Did you have something there that helped you? Um, actually, if I could go back in time, I would take more music classes at the high school because I, I, didn't, I never thought I was going to pursue music. Mm -hmm. I actually thought I wanted to pursue nursing. So I took oh, there's a big difference. <laughs> huge difference. My life took a total like 180, yeah. I took classes like AP Chemistry and AP Biology. And um, yeah, it wasn't until my senior year that I realized that I really, music was what I loved and I made me happy and I wanted to pursue that. So um, my senior year, I took a couple like music technology classes. But I wish I could go back and take like chorus and stuff like that. What do you think about um, music today that is, um, how can I put it, you know, instead of a, just a piano, it's a, it's a piece of technology that's creating the, the notes and the music and, as opposed to maybe just playing a real guitar, or, you know, how, what are your thoughts on how you want to create your music and what instruments you want to use? Um, well, I play uh, guitar, ukulele, and piano. Ukulele is like my favorite to play. I just that's a lot of fun. Isn't yeah, it? it's so small and easy to hold, and I just love the way it sounds. But yeah, my song that um, just came out is actually it was mostly created on the computer. Like we recorded the vocals and my guitar, and um, but everything else was made digitally. So that's really cool how that's, you can do that. Yeah, pretty amazing, huh? That's yeah. wonderful. Well, it sounds like things are taking off for you. You're going to study at one of the best schools of music that you could possibly get into, and I'm glad it's right here in Boston because maybe we'll keep seeing you in Hopkington yeah, once in a while. Yeah, me too. You know? um, have you heard of the Front Street concerts that go on here in Hopkington? No. Okay. That might be some place you want to check out. Um, they have a website. It's a local family here that has a huge barn that they built in their backyard. And uh, during the summer, on weekends, they throw concerts and an outdoor um, buffet. And it's very popular. And they pull in artists from oh, wow. all different places. Uh, it'd be a wonderful venue, I think, for yeah. you. So you might want to check that out. Front check Street Concerts okay. right here on Hopkinton. It's, it's, yeah, it's very nice. It's very good. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I want to make sure that I you know, have given you an opportunity to really talk about your music and what you're going to be doing. And I'm sure people that will be watching the show, they'll say, oh, I know Abby. She does a great job. Um, so is there anything else you can think of that you want to share with us? Um, definitely check out my website because you can find. Which uh, is? It's abbyhennigan.com. Abbyhennigan.com. Make yeah. sure we get that in the credits at the end of the show. Yes. Yeah, so um, if you go on there, you can get to anything from there. You can get to my YouTube channel where I have original songs and cover songs. Um, you can get to my Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of the social media. Um, I have links to my iTunes song and Spotify. And um, there's a little informational thing about me if you wanted to look up more. That sounds and, good. Um, yeah. I have to ask you one last question, though. Out of all the songs, that you, and this might be really hard to answer, out of all the songs that you've sung, do you have a favorite? Not maybe one of your own originals, but one you know that wasn't that you didn't write, but that you really enjoy singing? Um, like I heard you did the national anthem recently for a, yeah. a hockey game in Hockington or something, but do you have a favorite? Wow. Yeah, that's a tough one, isn't it? Um, I love singing the Beatles. The Beatles are my favorite. Um, I love singing Ingrid Michaelson. She's mm -hmm. one of my favorite artists. But like one of my... Um, my favorite original songs that I've ever sang. It's called Little Bird, and that's also on my YouTube channel. I sang it at, the last time I sang it was at the um, Hopkinton High School talent show, and I wrote it about my mom, and because she recently, about two years ago, she passed away, and that's one of my favorite songs to sing, oh. yeah. Well, very sorry to hear about her. Thanks. But I'll have to go listen to that. Yeah. And hear what it's, yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here, Abby, and sharing your 
how your career has taken off of and course. what you're going to be doing. <laughs> Excuse me, as I'm losing my voice again. What you're going to be doing at, at Berkeley, and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you we'll so much. We'll look forward to hearing and seeing you more on YouTube, radio, wherever. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you for joining us for this program and hearing about Abby and her music. For more information about Abby's music, visit her website. For more information concerning all about Hopkinton, find us on hcam.tv. Excuse me. If you or someone you know is having an impact on our community, we want to hear about it. Send an email, and perhaps you'll find them sharing their story right here on All About Hopkinton. I'm Mary Arnott, and thank you for watching. This show often talks to people who have interesting hobbies or careers or different things that they have going on that affect our community. I'm Mary Arnott, your host. There is a huge need for providing food for individuals and family. And that's the key, that's the key. is yeah. working well together. You can see more episodes online at our website, hkim.tv. Hi, I'm Tim Kilda, and this is Business Matters. I think we got to talk a little bit about the history. I mean, uh, you were born into something pretty special, weren't you? Yeah. The shop is a, is a safe haven for a lot of people, young and old. Business Matters is HCAM's show focusing not only on businesses at Hopkinton, but more importantly, the people who run and manage those businesses.